Okay. Welcome, gents. Let's get started with a hard-hitting and explosive question. This is for everybody, uh, including uh, Avi. Uh, which was the worst injury that you suffered while making this film? Kellen, let's start with you and then work our way down. <laughs> uh, uh, What's your question? I mean, we just do stunts. We have motors blowing off in our faces. So, I mean, I didn't really get hurt on anything. I had to learn how to use uh, the motorcycle. So, I kind of dropped that a few times over a tank, but that's about it. Okay. You're walking, which is good. Yeah. Okay. Yep, Anto I'm here. Uh, Antonio? I, I got, I got uh, an injury the first take that I did in the movie. <laughs> and I carried all uh, through the movie, but I didn't say that to anybody because I didn't want for them to think that I was just getting older. <laughs> uh, but it was just going, uh, running up the roof to the helicopter. <laughs> just the first shot, I got a pain on my right knee, and, um, and now it's gone, but it, it just uh, stayed there for a couple of months. You're a trooper, I like it. Uh, and Sly. That's it? That's <laughs> it. God, I got a pain in the knee. <laughs> I wake up with that. It's like, hmm, breakfast. <laughs> no, I mean, I literally, uh, usually I grade the quality of a film by the intensity of the injury. Like, if I do stop on my mom will shoot, I never get hurt. <laughs> I do Rambo to Expendables, I break my neck, I <laughs> my spine, I dislocate both shoulders. I go, this is going to be a good movie. <laughs> this is really lucky. So, so on this one here, I, was like, I ended up really taking a fall on my back. I had to have some metal put in there. So if I'm uh, squeaking, <laughs> just deal with it, okay? It's, it's not my shoes, it's my back. <laughs> uh, and Jason? I uh, snapped a shoelace. It was very depressing. <laughs> now, Jason actually saw death at the bottom of the Black Sea. He's very modest about it. Just drove about a five-ton truck 60 feet down into black mud because I cut the brake line. And <laughs> That's, that's, that's a new <laughs> reveal, by the way. Uh, and Wesley? I, uh, I broke a nail. <laughs> In someone's eye. <laughs> when, when Sly wanted to cut the brake line. That's right. <laughs> no, I didn't, I didn't get too many injuries on this one. I made it out of, the, uh, made it out of it alive. Negotiation was a little rough. <laughs> but other than that, for the most part, I... You know what's so funny, though? When, when we were standing around, and actually I filmed it, because as Jason was drowning, I was filming it with an iPhone. I guess that makes me a bit insensitive. I don't know. I just thought, you know, this is a magic moment. And I, went and, it. <laughs> and I couldn't help him anyway, because I, I would have drowned. And afterwards, they pull him up. He's like pale and then he's, he's changing and we're going oh my god and then we're all sitting around as expendables in a group going I wouldn't jump in after him shit would you save him <laughs> hell no I wouldn't go in I've drowned you know I, I, I like the guy but not that much it's like all these real life heroes when they're actually confronted and jumping to work are you crazy get wet no no no, no not me but I'd have been able to breathe 30 seconds <laughs> earlier like... if it took your foot off my head. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny, like, no, no, I'm going to get, oh, I might get hurt. Are you crazy? Me? Oh, no, I can't swim well enough. <laughs> it was great. So, Jason, at the moment like that, you really know who your friends are, right? Exactly, yeah. I'll never work with him again. You have no friends. <laughs> I don't uh, Avi, I presume you sustained no injuries while making the movie, but uh, I imagine scheduling these guys alone is a backbreaker in itself. I get the brain surgery. I need the brain surgery when I see the price that it costs this <laughs> to make this movie. But um, the worst part for me is actually to um, to play tennis. I got the tennis elbow, so I want you to feel no, sorry for you me. You got also. wounded. You had when you went into your pocket. You found all these fish hooks in there <laughs> instead of money. I mean, that's, that's, that's. <laughs> No, I mean, listen to me. I want to say he's, he's the greatest. He supports us. This movie is, is expensive, and he stepped up, and we're really, really proud of it. It was not an easy shoot. He uh, allowed us to have a second unit of 550, a first unit of, what, almost 600. So we, we felt that we were really, really, really competitive, and uh, I want to thank you for taking all your money. <laughs> uh, let's throw it over to you guys now. Uh, put your hands up if you have any questions. Yes, please, sir. In the third row. I don't know if there is a mic, actually. There is no mic. Just, just yeah. Um, so a question There's a mic. There's a mic. Hallelujah. There's a mic. It's yeah. not on. It doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Which magazine? Uh, men's Fitness magazine. It, it, oh, might, work it. it might work out. It might work circulation. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's interesting because... Men's, men's thickness. <laughs> oh, men's <laughs> fitness. Okay. 
you guys, you guys will talk about the kind of injuries it's, it's inevitable that you're going to get making this kind of film. What do you, is there anything you kind of do uh, training-wise in the gym before the shoot starts to kind of prepare your body to help you? With that? You, you, you prepare, but you just, you, there's just something about, you know, you're, you're going across cinder blocks and gravel and, and rebar and you trip and you bust up and uh, you get a back blast from uh, you, RPGs and it, it, it gets serious. It's, um, it's kind of like a weird sporting event when you do these sort of films. You're going, it's just like any sport. You're going to get injured. There's no getting away from it. But is there anything you find that helps you recover, or is there anything? Uh, there's no question that everyone usually shows up really fit and goes downhill from there. We just said, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, that's, that's the way it is. So it's like by the end of the you season, yes. you, know, you know what you're going to look like at 90. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, please, here in the front row. There's a lady in the front row. We can just get the microphone over there. Thank you. Right here. Front row. Thanks. Um, uh, the violence in this film seems to be less graphic than the previous two. Is that a deliberate um, thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyone want to jump on? I guess I'll talk about it. Well, the idea of PG-13, we wanted to hit a broader audience. And because of our predecessors uh, looking at the Bournes and, and James Bond, we thought, I mean, they're, they're pretty violent films. They're, they're extremely graphic without pushing it. Of course, when we do the DVD, then you'll see the next 80 frames, and then you say, oh, there it is. But we thought we would convey it, and I thought also the amount of, of violence or the amount of uh, warfare in this movie, if it was graphic, it'd be, after a while, like nauseating. It's just almost too much. Uh, even though I personally enjoy it, I just think that... Um, it, it would be pushing the envelope. Also, it would diminish the humor. For example, uh, Hail Caesar was going to die, literally. And he kept saying, don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. I said, well, you're doing a TV show, you have to die. I'm sorry. <laughs> that if, if you really want to do that show, I can't, you can't, you, traitor. And literally, he comes over, and he's almost had tears in his eyes. He goes, I don't want to die. And I'm sitting there with Avi, and it's almost like an execution. We were sitting there, oh, should we execute him? No. And, am I right? Am I lying? With the pick and we're sitting around, the and pick it's pop. an hour away. He is going to die. And that was the whole premise. Mel Gibson kills him, and so, oh my God, it's now on. You killed Hill Caesar. Don't, don't give all the ending of the movie. <laughs> all right, he dies, but he doesn't. He comes back. There's two he of, doesn't die. Doesn't there's two die. guys. There's a dead one and a live one. And we don't know. You have to see. But anyway, we just decided to, to uh, keep him around, but also he's mortally injured because of the idea. It just sets a tone that is almost. Um, not the word irredeemable, it's, but it's just even at the end, it's a pallor because you've lost a beloved person. And that's the difference between, say, R and PG 13. So it's great for anyone doing PG 13s. You only get mortally wounded, you don't get fatally <laughs> wounded. Okay. Uh, there's a gentleman right at the front, right back with his hand up. Sorry to make Right from the front row, right to the back row. And then we'll get you guys in between. Right at the very back, Jim, with the uh, sorry. <laughs> Hey, guys. Um, thank you very much for being here. Congratulations on a, a fantastic film. Um, my question's uh, to Sly. I think, obviously, there's a lot of new faces in this film, uh, both young and old, and it really feels like there's a real kind of spirit of passing of the torch with this one. I wondered if you can talk a little bit about the people you brought on board and, and how much that kind of spirit inspired the film. And, yeah. Okay, I mean, I'll just uh, speak quickly, but I think they should explain it themselves. I felt that it's at a point where, where we needed to upgrade and retool and bring actors that are known for their physicality, but they're also incredibly dramatic actors, nominated actors, actors that have done films almost in every genre. And I thought this would be interesting. Also, the age factor is that youth must be served. So we brought in the new generation. And it, it's almost like a parental thing. All children think they know the answers. They get into trouble. Parents can save them. Then they save their parents. Anyway, it's, so it has a kind of a, a, a family situation going. But what did you bring to it, my friend? Yeah. You. I'm talking to you. And you, you too, yes. Um, what did I bring to it? Um, <laughs> I, I see this, this uh, type of uh, movies uh, always with the possibility to have uh, a wink of an eye to the audience. 
um, I brought comedy. I, I saw possibilities in the character to just uh, make people uh, have uh, comical relief uh, during the, the movie. I talked to Sly at the beginning, and, it, and the character was uh, designed in a way that allowed me to do that uh, very clearly. And he says, you do whatever you want. <laughs> and so uh, I started playing with that idea in mind. I ended up improvising a lot. Uh, I mean, this guy became kind of a compulsive talker. Uh, it, it is a weapon of mass destruction of uh, talking. And, uh, and just, uh, when I saw my fellow actors start rolling eyes, I said, yes, I am there. You know, I mean, <laughs> they just wanted to strangle me, you know, <laughs> basically in every scene. And that actually provokes uh, some laughter. Basically, the character is just hiding something painful inside, and that's his way uh, to do it. But, but, I, but I thought it, it could be just adding a new color uh, mm -hmm. to, to everything that it was on the screen already. Wesley, yeah. what, what did you feel like you brought to it? Because we've worked together in Demolition Man. We know each other very, very well. Uh, yeah, I've been waiting to work with you ever since. No, thank you. You were busy, and <laughs> I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> really? Where were you, bro? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, in the opportunity to work with uh, the whole squad of uh, extremely talented and iconic action guys and actors, I was looking forward to that. But I, like Antonio, tried to bring a little bit of humor to the character and, uh, you know, a little bit more, a little bit of my martial arts action where I could get some in and, and have a great time at the same time. Yeah. And, uh, and Kellen, was there a, a sort of... Brought a little, bit, a little bit more color to the... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> for me, there's a duality between Barney Ross and, uh, you know, John Smiley for me. You know, you never really see the young Barney, and there's an essence of who John is and how he becomes, and, you know, throughout the journey of the script, and potentially, you know, in four, five, six, through ten, <laughs> ideally, um, you'll see that developing him open up a bit more. And so, you know, my character, he doesn't smile. You know, he's, he has a lot of weight on his shoulders from his past, and, you know, Barney Ross gets in there. You know, he's one of the few that can actually get in there. And, you know, so my, my character is more of the drama queen, I guess. But he'll open up. He will. <laughs> uh, through 10, is that a confirmation? We're going through 10. Yes, it is. It is. Yes. You heard it here first. Uh, and Jason, as someone who's been there from the very beginning, an expendable staple, how do you react when all these, uh, these young'uns come on board and, uh, and new, oh, new I, members I, of the cast? Oh, I welcome it. I think it's, it's necessary. <laughs> it's a necessary evil. <laughs> <laughs> you got to do it. You know, let them get beat up for a while. It's great. We love that. No, it's, it's wonderful. For example, Ronda Rousey's not here, but um, there was... You know, uh, debate, well, Ronda Rousey, she's, she's not really an actress, she's a fighter. I said, no, she's a, she's a new kind of entertainer. And we're now becoming, a lot, a lot of us are hybrids. Whereas you just, you're, you're, Antonio's directed, he's written, he writes, and, and so does Wesley, and, and, and Jason has all these other sides to them. And I thought, well, let's take someone from a world MMA. And I couldn't have been luckier or more right this girl is one of a kind. She's very sexy, and she also can tie you into a knot and, and retie you and, and be charming. And she's you know, still raw and learning on the job, but we, we've got something special. Then you have Victor Ortiz, who, who's like a real world champion. You have real world champions in here. Not just, you have professional athletes on championship teams. So you have, a, you have just a real a hybrid instead of just all actors, because I, I don't think it could have been accomplished with just all actors. There's some skills there that take an entire lifetime to learn, and that's what we uh, were, were blessed with by getting to employ those skills. Absolutely. And, uh, and Jason, do you want to weigh in on that one? Uh, I think you said it good. Uh, <laughs> I'll have what he's having. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, we just let me go in the, uh, in the second row. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now magazine. Um, so you're all like really manly, like grr men. But um, I want to know what the um, the girl. <laughs> I want to know what the girliest thing about you all is. Like any manicures between you? How many bubble baths do you have? 
All right, I, let me ask you, who's the last time you had a manicure? I've never had one, mate. Oh, what's <laughs> I only have the pedicure. A mani-pedi? Pedi man. Usually we buff it along the curbstone like this, yeah, getting out of a car. Oh, yeah, me too, yeah. Yeah, we, we're pretty filthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like manicures. There's <laughs> <laughs> a gentleman here in front of <laughs> <laughs> John Mosby in Pat Magazine. Uh, you, you joked about um, four through ten, but how far do you plan in advance? Do you get ideas and think, oh, that will go for the next movie? And, and bearing in mind that there's talk of an expender bells at some point, okay. are there any women that you would like to see in that? Yes, uh, there, there are. And we're now starting to see that you, you don't have, I can totally depend on actresses per se, pure. You're going to need a certain kind of physicality to pull that off. Uh, getting back to how many expendables, Avi, what's the deal? How many do you want? About 27. Okay. <laughs> Jason, how many do you have patience for? <laughs> patience for what, Sly? Well, how many expendables before it says, all right, I'm done. I want to be an expendable. Well, well the idea is to make at least another two or three, and then we'll see. No, in other With words, the... I'm joking here, but we'd like to just continue this because it's, it's an ongoing experiment, too. You have... Uh, a great franchise in the Avengers and all that situation where you can branch off and do other things. Ideally, I would love to see some of these characters like Antonio or the Young Expendables go off and do their own movies. I know that's maybe a pipe dream. And then you come together for the big festival of violence or the great uh, 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 challenge of whoever the villain is. But that would be, that would be the ideal. So I think, I think it all depends on this one here. But I could definitely see one and a half, at least four, <laughs> maybe two more, and then you never know. But the third one I've always found is uh, when I started doing films that would have been franchised, I was ridiculed for it. We were all worse, like, ooh. Fran but I was always intrigued with television, because how can they do 10 years of the same character, of, you know, all in the family, same location, and yet you watch it, but you do one film, you go, oh, that could be the end, that's the end. Some films are designed like that, but other films you have characters that continue to grow and manifest different personality uh, changes. Now, with Expendables, you got a situation here where we're in uncharted waters. To put all women together, is, are, will that really work? Or do you have to put in perhaps some women that are actually really known to be tough, other MMA fighters? And, and then is it, uh, the, are the Expendables really part of a divorce with Barney and say Sigourney Weaver, who's my wife, and she inherited half the Expendables. So that's, that's <laughs> like, oh, I got to deal with that too. I lost the house and my mercenaries in the group. <laughs> Oh my God! So there's it's all these things you're trying to concoct. So when we do it, it doesn't uh, uh, just languish there. It's like oh, it's it's just a, a, a use of the name. It actually is something that would hold its own. So sounds like you'd like to face off against the Avengers, ultimately, Sly. Is that the idea? Expendables versus the Avengers. That's where you're going. Yeah, yeah. If we could, we'd be the Earthbound Avengers. <laughs> uh, there's a gentleman here in the front row, the blue shirt. Thank you. And then we'll stay in the front row as well. Uh, it's a question for Wesley. Um, the previous two Expendables, they've always um, accentuated the enjoyment that they've had on set, and it's been a real um, sort of locker room atmosphere. And I wondered whether that was a relief um, coming, making your comeback, whether to come into that sort of atmosphere where it, was, where it was very blokey and you could make a joke of things. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love it. I loved it. I mean, it's like you, you can imagine being on a, an Olympic team or an Olympic sports team of some sort where you got some of the best of the best uh, players all playing at the same time. So you get the same kind of uh, interaction and interplay and crack jokes with each other. And all of these guys are quite funny in their own right. So, yeah, you get a, there's a lot of fun with it. Oh, good. So you don't mind that I'm writing Escape from Alcatraz 2 for you? <laughs> we'll have to talk. Yes, please, right here in the uh, front row as well. There's another guy beside you. A uh, question for both Sly and Abby. Getting back to the Expender Bells. I was talking to Jacqueline Bissett this morning and she'd love to play the villain if that film ever comes off. <laughs> we never thought about it as a villain, but uh, 
Look, about expendables, <coughs> we are right now in the final eyes of the script. We have got uh, lots of idea about uh, who is going to be all the, the action movie star ladies, women, and we're planning to do it beginning of next year. And that's all I can say about this movie right now. Yes, please. Sylvester, you're the, uh, the godfather of the Expendables franchise. How do you <coughs> balance working on the script and then getting all these wonderful actors to join you? How do you tailor it to suit their skills? Well, you just, you just hit it. There's, it's really a finite number of actors that I think it, that bring a certain kind of uh, cachet or personality that, would, that blends. So you try to not get two of the same, if you know what I mean. And I have long-term relationships with people that I didn't realize how far they go back. But I thought, oh, okay, we've done Expendables 1 and 2. Now we have to up the game. I think Antonio. Antonio hasn't done an action film, but he's very physical. He can do it. So it, the, to answer your question, it's very, very time-consuming. It takes a long time to convince some people uh, a lot. Literally, you're calling them on your birthday, and you're there for like four hours going, yeah, you know, it's my birthday. Do me a favor. You say, yes, <laughs> it's my birthday. I'm talking to you from. And you, you do a lot of begging and cajoling. And it, it, it's, it's wild. And some just immediately. You know, I call Harrison Ford. Okay, I'm in. And then uh, Mel wants to know about the part. Originally, I wanted Mel to direct. And I thought, and he, but Mel is such a great director. And, and everything is so personal. It has to come from him. But he goes, I wouldn't mind playing a villain when... Sold! <laughs> Sold! Uh, Antonio, were you the, uh, the gentleman that Sly called on his birthday, by any chance? He seems to be intimating that might be the case. <laughs> well, I think I, I, I ran into a Sly on a parking lot. That's right. I, he was the parking lot negotiation. Okay. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was Harrison on and, the phone. Uh, <laughs> uh, you should come. You should come to, to be in. I, mean, I don't want to play the bad guys. Yeah. I don't want to play the bad guys because they all will die, and if there is a franchise, I am not going to be there. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants to be yeah. the bad guy. So <laughs> he just called me later, and he says, uh, okay, uh, now I have a beautiful part for you. He's an angel. He's a wonderful guy, and he can just have a progression in, in future franchises, I mean, movies <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So he said, absolutely. And I'll be there with you, my friend. We became very good friends, actually, with the Assassins uh, years yeah, ago. And that was great. It was a great shooting, and uh, ever since. Uh, we did work together, we, I realized last night, but we actually, not together, but in one of the spy kits. No, oh, three. stop already. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> stop. It was stop. good, man. It was my franchise. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, my Action my Kids God. franchise. That was getting really personal. <laughs> I'm going to uh, bring Poos in Boots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kellen, what were your negotiations like with Sly? Uh, you know, this, this dates back to 2009 when uh, the first Expendables came around and there was a, a young Expendable in that one and I auditioned, it was during the Twilight years and for some reason, we were just talking about this, I had a black eye and scraps from some stunt I was doing, so Sly liked that, he's like, alright, this kid can take a hit, you know, he likes doing this stuff. And then uh, due to dates and them rewriting the, the script and taking the character out, uh, that, that character wasn't in there. So I was kind of bummed. And then uh, the third one came around and, you know, it's a whole legion of young Expendables. I got to meet with Avi on Hercules. And he kept on pushing Expendables 3 and the meetings for Hercules. And I'm like, what about Hercules? You know, you thinking about me for this one? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Expendables 3, we're thinking about doing this. So, um, yeah, from day one, I wanted to be a part of it. Huge action junkie, you know, huge fan of Jasons and, and Sly and Arnie and you know all these guys. You got you got Blade in here. You got Zorro. I mean, for me, it was the characters. Growing you up got, in the Midwest, you got, I didn't. you got three vampires on this dais here. <laughs> Think about it. So it was a no-brainer. Three I want separate to. movies. My God, <laughs> you guys <laughs> really suck. <laughs> really, really suck. Real. Literally. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I met with Sly, and I went up to his house. We talked to the character, and you know, he he gave me the stamp of approval. His uh, his daughters were Twilight fans, so that always helps. <laughs> uh, Wesley, what were your negotiations like? 
Say again. What were your negotiations like with, uh, with Sly for this? <laughs> um, <laughs> Distant. Um, yeah. Did he just call up and very go? Easy. Be in the movie? Very easy. Very easy. We very told, easy. Yeah. You know, we told you... him how much is he getting, when is he coming, and that's why he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and Jason, the same for you? And now it's the third time round? No, it's the one he called on, uh, on his birthday, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's... <laughs> I remember we sat down for, uh, we had a lunch together and he said, do you want to come to work? And I said, what's the role? And uh, he said, no, I just need someone to make my sandwiches. My chef's died. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. Did you go for it. Sip one. Yes, please. Second row. Thank you. Uh, this question for Sly and Wesley. Uh, you mentioned working together on Demolition Man. Was there at any point any talk of dyeing your hair blonde again to do the Simon Phoenix <laughs> hairstyle? Oh, yeah. I dare you to ask him to dye his hair blonde again. He, that, he, he hinted at it, but I, so I refused. That was a lot of work, man. I thought, wow. Yeah, yeah. It I was a lot my, of work. Yeah, that blonde hair. My hair fell out. I know. His, literally, his hair fell off. Yeah. And we had to, we had to buy some more. This buy some blonde more divot every morning. <laughs> it was great to hit balls off of. It was great. <laughs> uh, there's a gentleman here in the third row. We'll just get the mic to you. <laughs> uh, hi there. Uh, Duncan from Den of Geek. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, the panel, actually, because you've had a lot of great action in your careers. If you have like a, a favourite moment, be it a fight or a stunt scene or a car chase, um, that you're particularly proud of, one that really stands out from, from any film you've done. Hmm. Should we start with Kellen and work our way down? Yeah. Kellen, I'll start with you. What was it? Just favourite scene? Yeah, yeah any kind of favourite action scene mm -hmm. that you've done. You know, I mean, honestly, being a part of this movie, that's... that's the, to date, you know, I've done only a few action movies. I love doing action movies, but I, the one that stands out is when all of us were in the helicopter. We have, you know, a slide running. I'm not going to give the end of the movie or anything, but just having everyone who I grew up watching in a helicopter together and just cracking jokes. Yeah, Victor Ortiz farting, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> and you're kind of locked in, harnessed in, so you can't fall out of the helicopter. So you're God. a bit uh, imprisoned oh, by the gas. <laughs> Interesting image. Uh, Antonio. Uh, I don't know. Something from Shrek. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Those stunts are tough, man. <laughs> but no, and anything that has to do, I feel proud, anything that has to do with uh, horses and sword mm. fighting in Zorro. I put a lot of interest and time into those things, so I'm proud of that, actually. And, uh, and Sly, you've got one. I, I just had, I've had, I've been lucky. I've had so many interesting ones, like you know, falling through trees in First Blood, doing the last third of the tree, getting wiped out. Um, I'm really proud of. Matter of fact, I filmed it in slow motion because I didn't know if I was going to get murdered, killed on it. When in, in Rambo Three, there was no CGI, and um, one is we almost get hit by a helicopter, literally on horseback, and the second one's playing the Booz Kazi game, where you, it's a, it's a real game where you play with the body of a dead sheep. It's a it's a Afghan game, and that was done for real. But overall, I would say the, dealing with Dolph Lundgren and and Rocky IV, that was brutal. I mean, really brutal. He was so unbelievably powerful. It's hard to describe him. I mean, he, he almost killed me. So, But the idea of having, in other words, you sustain, you say, oh, an action beat. Hanging from in, in cliffhanger was, was absolutely amazing because I hate heights, and it's 4,000 feet. You're going, how'd they talk me into this? Really? I don't like being in cowboy boots. Even that's too high. And I said, what am I doing here? But the, the idea of, of sustaining a, a 15 round fight and you know that it took six months, so it's really one long stunt, that, that, that is what I'm proud of because I know I could never even come close to doing that again today. So thanks, Dolph, <laughs> for the injuries. Uh, Jason? Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, you do a lot of different things, riding jet skis. And I think one that sticks in my memory would possibly be having a fist fight outside. Uh, a helicopter standing on the skids on a movie called Crank. I think that was uh, <laughs> quite adrenaline fueled. It was a pretty scary moment because we actually took off from the top of a tall building, so there was no sort of an adjustment to sort of leaving the ground. You can sort of adjust and get used to it, but we, you know, we took off a building that was already 2,000 feet in the air. So oh, as you wow. get on the edge, you get, you know, a, a serious sort of rush. 
Uh, I think that one sticks in my mind. I'll never forget that day. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, Wesley. Yeah, I think I, I recall like one of the most memorable stunts was wearing 14-inch size, three-inch heels with uh, John Leguizamo <laughs> and the two on school <laughs> and running down the street. And that was game. pretty hairy. It was, it was rough, man. It took a lot. <laughs> it took a lot. <laughs> it did take a lot of guts. <laughs> yeah, and, that, was uh, a, that was a rough one. I think Expendable 3 is the biggest action movie that I've done, and I've done many. Uh, it's really got everything there in this movie, from train, helicopter, boat, guns, you name it, it's in this movie, and you will see it in the movie. Okay, there's a gentleman here in the fourth row. Thank you. Hi, guys. Uh, Matt Beadle, Zoo Magazine. Um, you seem to have a lot of fun. Uh, when you make these movies, and as you said, there's a great blend of, of personnel. What I'm interested to know is how much does that bring a, a friendly rivalry slash competitive edge between you when you're on set in terms of trying to outdo each other? I, I respect these guys greatly, you know, and I'm also a fan of their work. So the opportunity to work with them and then find out not only are they real guys, but they have very wide, colorful personalities and I can resonate with them. That's, that's just the icing on the cake. Yeah. You know? And I never played a real team sport, so this is about the closest I've gotten <laughs> to being on a, on a team. You know? It is like a team. It really yeah. is like a team sport. You're right. Uh, everyone just has very, very healthy egos and athletic ability, and, and um, some are very, very good actors. And you're going to be competitive. Nobody wants to be the one sitting there looking like a piece of chewed string at the end of the scene. It's like, mm, boy, did I get wiped out. So you just, you do your best. So in, inviting these actors, there. like when I'm working with Harrison Ford, he, he's like minimalist. But when, and I'm saying, oh, God, I'm just eating them up on screen. And then I see the dailies, I go, you were just swallowed, Sly. <laughs> you know, he's, <laughs> he's good. You know what I mean? It's just, he's, they're very, very, very good. Very good. So I, I appreciate them coming on board. And I, and I, I think we, we have eons to go. Now that I, if, I just see there's so many other actors that you could bring. Even Kelsey Grammer. Are you kidding me, Kelsey Grammer? Kelsey Grammer is amazing. And he's got a, a, an incredible range. So you could use him to begin the plot of Expendables 4. Here, knock on the door. Hey, Kelsey, what's up? Oh, let me explain to you what's going on. And then that's the beginning of another one. You just have so many opportunities now because it's not just athletic actors. It, there's an opportunity now for just real actors to do athletic things and uh, make it just, uh, just advance the project more and more and more. Okay, we have time for one last question. So this gentleman in the front row. The mic is on its way, I promise you. Hi, it's Mark again, Dolphin from Film News. It's a question for Avi. What's it like working with such a talented array of actors and who's the easiest to work with and more importantly, who's the most difficult? <laughs> There's nobody easy to work with. Though, <laughs> nobody. But uh, look... Um, who's the most difficult? Uh, Sylvester Stallone. That's right. <laughs> Harry, don't believe this. Harry Knowles is here, my great friend. He knows. We work together on Spy Kids, and he knows I'm just a pushover, Harry. Don't believe it. Like, yeah. The key is the harmony, and that's what, uh, with the help, and I mean it, um, although Sly is, um, is the, one of the main actors in the movie, but he's also a director. He's also a writer. He serves the coffee to all the, uh, every morning. <laughs> He does the wardrobe and so on, but with the help of Sly and all these great actors, we, we have seven franchise uh, actors in this movie, seven. It's never happened before. So it's a, on one side it was a challenge, but on the other hand, it's a, I'm very happy. Fantastic. And it seems like a good note on which to end. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for all your questions. And thanks, of course, to Avi Lerner, Wesley Snipes, Jason Statham, Sylvester Stallone, Antonio Manderas, and Kellen Lutz. Thank you very much, Rick. Thanks for watching. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link on the screen now?